I'm Craig from Carsalton Advisory. This tutorial series covers the Excel 2016 Expert Curriculum. Download the file linked in the description and let's work through it together as we continue reviewing Section 2.1, Custom Data Formats and Validation. Let's get started. So let's start by talking a little bit about uh, some shortcuts for doing some fills here in Excel. Uh, the first thing we want to show you is just a, a fill right shortcut. So if I select a cell, and if I'm going to just hold shift and arrow over to the right here, I can hit control and then the R key. And then what that will do, Excel will carry over whatever was in this first selected cell. And it basically copies it all the way over until we get to the, the right hand side of my selection. Doesn't modify anything, just brings it straight forward. Uh, this also works vertically. So if I start here, hold shift and arrow down, I can now hit control D and Excel will move that all the way down uh, to the end of my selection. I'm just going to undo that. Now, that also works with formulas. So in this case, I just had this the, the number 1 in my formula bar. In this case, I have uh, a formula that's going to take the, the value in the cell to the left and add 1 to it. So if I take this cell, hold select, oh, excuse me, hold select, excuse me, shift, and arrow to the right, now when I hit that control R, it's going to copy over that same formula. So now I get a little bit of a growth uh, pattern occurring for me without having to, to, to really copy and paste formulas. I'm just filling it over. Now instead of uh, plus one, you could do it times a certain number uh, and, and get a fill quickly and easily done that way. So control R to go to the right, control D to go down. And now you can do up and to the left, but I find I use those a lot less commonly than the right and the down, uh, but there are shortcuts available for those ones too. Now, in addition to that, Excel does uh, with the little, the box in the lower right hand corner of a selected cell does have some additional uh, fills and series capability built right into it that are fairly straightforward. So if I were to go back to this cell here and just drag it to the right, we actually end up in the same result. Excel has taken that formula and copied it over so that it goes all the way over to the right. And so it's very straightforward. Now, if we go back here and I select this one and drag it to the right, again, Excel is going to take that and copy it straight over for me with no change. Now I can coax Excel into doing something a little bit uh, more sophisticated than that. Uh, if I change that now to a two, if I select both of them, and then if I drag this to the right, Excel spots that there is a pattern here and it continues it on. And so for a lot of cases, that's, that's fine. You notice when we look in each of these cells, there's not a formula here. It has just spotted a number and has gone by plus one. If I was to have gone by uh, having a three here instead of the two and do this as a series, Excel would just skip count by two all the way up. So I would now have a list of all the odd numbers. So it's it's it, it works. And again, for a lot of situations, that'll, that'll do what you need. Uh, however, what if what I wanted to have happen is I wanted the value to double every time. So I have a one and now I'm going to double that to go to two. Let's drag that and see what happens. Well, as we know, it's just going to continue counting up by one. What if we try and go a little bit more sophisticated? Let's add a four here and now drag that across. All right. Now uh, Excel's a little bit confused and it's giving us some, some values that don't intuitively make sense for us here. So what if we do want to have a, a growth pattern or a geometric pattern rather than just an arithmetic increase? So Excel has some advanced fill options that we'll take a look at here in just one second. So let's take a look at a few of the uh, more advanced fill series that Excel will do for us. Uh, so let's go down here to cell H12. And what we're going to do is we're going to create some automatic series. Now we've shown what happens if we just uh, take a number and drag. And if I wanted to go say 1 through 10, I could start with my 1 and drag down till I, excuse me, I need to go to my 2 here to show Excel that it's a growth series. And I can slowly drag that down until I get the value I want. So if there's only a couple, that may not be such a big deal. But what if we want to go to, say, 1,000? Or, or what if we want to go to 10,000? It would take uh, a fair amount of uh, 
Excel dexterity or mouse dexterity in order to, to get it to the exact number that we want. So Excel can help us out with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit Alt-H, we'll hit Fi to go into our fill options, and then S for series. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to select, uh, we want this series in a column. So we want it to go straight down. We want it linear. So that basically means it's going to be either adding or subtracting the value that we want. Uh, we can choose our step value here, which we'll keep as one. So let's say we want to go uh, all the way up to uh, 1,000. So we can type 1,000 here. And when I click OK, we now have a list. And I can just control, down arrow. And there's all 1,000 of those values automatically set up for me by Excel. I haven't had to scroll. I haven't had to worry about going too far or not far enough. enough. It's just automatically done. I'm going to undo that. Now, what if instead of a linear series, we wanted that to grow? All right, so let's go the same place, Alt-H, F-I, and S. Uh, I'm going to go Alt-C for column still. I'm going to hit Alt-G for growth. Uh, this time, I want my value to double. Remember when we tried with just the normal dragging across and Excel couldn't figure out our growth pattern? In this case, we want it to grow by, uh, we, let's have it double every time. Okay, and this time I'm going to have a stop value of, uh, let's go 5,000. We'll hit OK. And sure enough, there is our growth pattern. Uh, there's not all that many rows because it doubling, it, uh, it grows quite quickly, exponentially, one might say. Uh, and when I look at it, again, there's no formulas here. Excel has just basically pasted in a value uh, in, for our growth series. Uh, I'm going to delete these here. All right, can we use this in order to do a, instead of a, like a doubling, a whole integer, what if, can we do it with a percent? Absolutely, let's demonstrate that. We'll hit Alt H, F, I, and S. Uh, we're gonna stay in columns. We're gonna go to growth. And this time, instead of going all the way up to two, we'll just go 1.1, and this will give us a 10% growth rate. Uh, let's go up to 10. We'll click OK. And sure enough, we can see our value growing by 10% all the way until it approaches, but doesn't get above 10. So this is a handy technique or handy capability in Excel where we can uh, get the, the right number of values until we hit our target. Now there's, so in addition to the linear and uh, growth options for the fill series, Excel also has some ability to do some fills with dates. So I'm gonna start off by entering the, today's date into my cell here. And I'm going to select how many dates across I want to go. I'm going to hit Alt-H, F-I. We'll go S for series. Now, you'll note Excel has already identified that we're going to be doing a date series in this case. And I can tell it how many units uh, or what type of units I want it to increase by. So if I select it like this, my step value is still 1. I'm going to hit OK. And now you see it's gone up uh, exactly one day at a time. If I undo this... Uh, and then do another series. This time I want to go up by three days. I can click OK, and you'll notice it is skipping three days at a time as it goes across this series. I'll undo that. Um, we could also tell it that we want to go not just uh, every day. What we want is just weekdays. So it's automatically going to skip our weekends uh, and not include any Saturday or Sunday dates in this list. So I'll click OK. And sure enough, we go 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then we skip over until the 17th because two of those days were weekends. The same thing happens in that you can choose the uh, how many days up it goes at each interval. And then you would have noticed in here we can also go up by months or by years. So if we go up by month and click OK, we now have it increasing by that value each period. So that should give you a good idea of the the different uh, advanced fills that Excel has built into it. There usually is a question of this sort in the exam, and certainly make sure you do the, the practice tasks for this one, as it gives you a pretty good uh, suite of uh, options to go through these. Now that we've looked at the different fill series options Excel provides, let's take a look at some data validation. Now, I don't use fill series a whole lot uh, in my normal my normal Excel use. It's nice to know what's there, and you know, two or three times a year I might use it. 
Data validation is something I use much more frequently. Uh, it's a great tool if you want to, or if you're building worksheets or workbooks that other people are going to use. Uh, it, it's a great way of preventing inputs coming into your model or your worksheet that's going to cause issues, uh, you know, bad formulas, give uh, unexpected results. Uh, you can kind of uh, prevent and preclude that from happening, both by restricting what goes in, but also you can give instructions to users so that when they, they come to an input, they'll have some guidance on what exactly they can do in that cell. So let's take a look at a couple examples here. Uh, so if we want to go uh, to our data validation, it's under the data tab. So we'll hit Alt A to go into data. Uh, we're going to hit V for validation, which is over here in my compressed toolbar. So we'll hit V twice to go into our data validation. Once we're going to in here, we'll go through some of these settings. So in this case, in this cell, any value can be entered into it. Excel isn't going to give any restrictions. But when we click this drop down, now we can see some of the options that are here. So if we wanted to, we could restrict this to whole numbers, decimals, uh, a list, which is a, 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 a range of particular values that uh, we let Excel accept. We can ex restrict it to dates, times, lengths, and then some custom, which will give you additional flexibility. So let's take a look at whole number. Once we've selected that, uh, Excel gives us the option to restrict the range of that. So we could have it between two numbers. We could have it not between two numbers, equal to. Uh, there's a whole variety. It would take us a long time to go through all of that. But let's stick with between here. What I want to do is, uh, let's say we want someone to give a, a rank of uh, something that they've viewed. And we want them to, to give it a rank, uh, you know, rate it between 0 and 100. So I could put 0 as my minimum here. I could put 100 as my maximum and click OK. So now in this input cell, we could select. I'm going to see if I buy my input style in this workbook. Uh, there's my styles. There we go. There's my input. All right. So um, let's try and add a 5 in here and see if that works. Well, that works fine. Let's try minus 1. I really didn't like this, so I'm going to rate it minus 1. Okay, I have an error message that pops up now. Uh, and what it's telling the user is that the value doesn't match the requirements and that you're going to have to try again. So I'll hit cancel. Let's try this again with 110. And again, that doesn't work. Uh, so the user cannot put any value in here that isn't, uh, that isn't allowed. Uh, so what we can also do, let's hit cancel. And we're going to go back into our uh, data validation. And this time, we're actually going to change our input message. So uh, let's put a rank or rating input. And then we'll put a message that says, uh, please enter your rating from 0. And I'll say lowest to 100. And I'll call that best. And we'll hit OK. So now when the user actually clicks into this cell, you're going to see this little instruction window pop open for them. So now when they get here, they have a little bit better idea of what needs to happen. The other thing we can do is put in our error alert. And so we might call this uh, improper value. And then now my error message should be uh, please enter a value between 0 and 100. So now if I try and put 110 in here, it tells me that we need to enter a value between 0 and 100. So it gives a little bit of additional information. So we'll hit cancel there and go back to 5. Uh, I will show you another one here that uh, I use frequently. So we'll make this another uh, input. I usually have this as a macro. That's why you're hearing that chime, is I don't have macro set up in this, uh, this particular instance of Windows. Uh, so let's take a look at a data validation list. Uh, so we've gone through the numeric values. Now, when we go into validation criteria, instead of a whole number or a decimal, we can also go to a list.
Now, effectively, whole number just restricts it to integers. A decimal doesn't force them or the user to put in a decimal. They can put just an integer as well, uh, whereas the whole number, they cannot put in a decimal. So let's go to a list. So a list, there's a couple ways you can do this. One, you can just type in the values directly into this source here, and you can separate them by a comma. You'll also notice this in cell dropdown is selected. So when I hit OK, and I go to my input cell, you'll notice this arrow here. When I click on here, here are my two options. And apparently I've left an A there with my yes. Um, so the user can select the value with the arrow or they could type it in. And I'm gonna have to put yes of uh, to match or go into my no. Uh, so that's one way of doing it. The other way is doing a, uh, a range, select a range. So I could have yes, uh, no, uh, maybe kind of a few options here. So now when we go to this cell here, I just hit Alt A V V to get into this. Now for my source, what I can do is select these values. Uh, and then when I allow this and go OK, you'll notice now this drop down box is um, all four of those values for me. Now, one quick trick I'll show you here, uh, which is something that I like to do. Uh, when I have values like this, especially if this the, these uh, values may change over time, I usually include what I call a stretch row. And so with a stretch row, I'm going to make this height 5, and I'm going to mark it in a dark color. Uh, so it's, uh, so I, I know what's there, effect, essentially. All right, and so now how a stretch row works is I'm going to go back to this data validation. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select that gray stretch row uh, into that formula. So when I click OK, you're going to see all those values. There's going to be a blank at the bottom, which no one really notices. But what's nice with this is let's say we want to add a future uh, option to that list in the future. All my user has to do is insert a row here and uh, put uh, quite quite a bit uh, as a new value in here. And now when I go to this, this is automatically updated. I, I, I don't have to, to worry about going back into the formula and extending it. That stretch row tells me that, hey, as long as I add that value right above uh, and by inserting a row, that's going to be included in that formula. So I use uh, stretch rows quite a bit. Uh, anytime I'm going to be summing uh, quite a, a number of rows, and, and in the future that might change. Just like before with this, we can add input messages as well as error alerts. Uh, to, to give our users a bit of additional instructions. Uh, I hope this has given you a bit of a taste of what data validation can, can do for you. And, and uh, I think you'll understand uh, why it's something that I use so frequently in my workbooks. Thanks for watching. This is Craig with Carshalton Advisory. I look forward to having you join us in the next video. Uh, don't forget to do the practice tasks. While I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled you're watching these videos, if you're not going through the practice tasks, I think you may struggle on the exam, and uh, I don't want that to happen. Um, so make sure you get that done if you have any questions with them. Um, I do have a whole series where I walk through each of the tasks that uh, the textbook has given you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.